Hello everyone and welcome to this week's newsletter. The Paris Olympics have been great, although somewhat challenging viewing. The challenging part is keeping up with the amount of coverage and the different time zones, of course. The Olympics fan is fantastic from a purely sporting perspective and as a recovering phys ed teacher I certainly enjoy it. But I also think that the event provides a wonderful example of how things can work when people from different countries, ethnicities, religions and political beliefs cooperate, treat each other respectfully and work within established rules. And I was reflecting that if only we could maintain this uh, in the political and geopolitical arena, the world would be a much better place. Watching the, Olymp the Olympics also reinforces to me the importance of us continuing to imbue a global perspective in our students through the curriculum here and the immersion opportunities that boys have. We don't have any students, current or past, competing at these Olympics, but we do have some performing at very high levels in other elite competition. Jack Binion in Year 7 is currently representing Australia in the World Sailing Championships in the UK. Jack and his skipper won the lead-up carnival and uh, they're looking good for the worlds. Also, recently Fletcher Guy represented Victoria at the Under-18 Boys National Hockey Championships on the Gold Coast winning a gold medal after going through the tournament undefeated. Ted Sargent, who's an elite golfer, was undefeated in all six of his matches at the National uh, Under-18 Golf Championship. Carl Laban and uh, Don Posterino were both members of the Victorian Under-16 football, that is soccer, team at the recent National Championships in Wollongong. And in AFL, Lockie Jakes, was named in the All-Australian Under-18 AFL team following the National Carnival recently. Representing uh, Victoria, Fletcher Pullen and Jack Pickett were both members of the Vic Country Under-16 team that won the 2024 Marsh AFL National Development Championship. And Nate Minch, who's uh, still under 15, represented Victoria at the Australian All-Schools Championships held recently on the Gold Coast. It's always really great to see our students achieving excellence in their chosen fields and I'm really confident that our commitment to providing facilities and programs to assist these elite performers in their training will continue to see more and more of our students achieving excellence in elite competitions outside the school and who knows, maybe in the next Olympics. Last week parents were informed of the pending MAXIS survey in recent years, this has been completed by students, staff and families and has been used to assist in the cre creation of our annual action plan. As a result of some recent changes, we've taken the decision uh, just in the last few days to not use the Maxis this year. I apologise to families for the inaccurate notification that you've received, but we won't be doing it this year. Many thanks to those parents who've responded to our request to avoid drop off and pick up in Queens Road. We're still having some issues with illegal and dangerous uh, parking, including behind parked cars, adjacent yellow lines, or in narrow sections of Queens Road West. Please help us keep everyone safe. In 2020, we were all really distressed at the tragic death of year 11 student, Tom Barnett. One significant group that was of great support to the Barnett family and that has supported many other families grieving the death of loved ones is the Hope Bereavement Care Organisation. It's Tom's 21st birthday in the next few weeks and his family are raising funds to support this organisation. I commend this initiative to you and encourage you to support it if you're in a position to do so and there's a QR code available on the hard copy of this, uh, this newsletter. This month, an amendment to the Fair Work Act legislated the right for school staff to disconnect after hours. This means that teachers are not obliged to be contactable outside of work hours should they choose. Our teaching staff across the board are generous with their time and many, of course, will continue to respond to emails or calls after hours. However, should they choose not to respond, as is their right, I ask for the understanding of all families and colleagues. God bless.